he was waiting the whole time all those good things were happening, he was waiting to get stabbed because that's what he was used to in life. Yes, sir. And you know what? That's funny because that is definitely something that as I get to know myself more, I've become better at that because I was very much like that probably in my early 20s. You know, all these good things are happening. Like, hold on, what's the real reason behind these good things? Does Akash really love me? Exactly. And I mean, like... And I did. And you did because you got it. You got a pure energy like you were talking about. But without knowing yourself, without being spiritually in touch, you can't separate, I won't say the good and the bad, but essentially pure energy and something that's dark, right? Well said. So when that comes, it, it, it might be, it, you might have no ill will. But that's what he saw, and he was waiting for it. From the time he shook your hand, he was waiting for that. Big facts. Yep. That's, uh, that's something I also wanted to touch on. I was trying to phrase the question earlier. But maybe for people that were like myself, you know, in my early 20s, what's a, besides getting to know yourself, what's a good way to kind of separate that pure energy Separate that dark energy and kind of not label people, but this is good for me or this works for me. This doesn't. I should avoid this. I should be around this. When they're picking the people that are within their circle, right? Because that's probably the most important part of self-development, I think, is having a good circle. What qualities would you tell them to look for? It's an interesting question because the answer is self-awareness, and I'm going to elaborate. Yeah. But if you're a snake, you would want to be around people that are kind of snaky, you know, mm-hmm. with more dark energy. Like, if you're a straight demon soul, like, it is in your own best interest to align with other villains. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, like, obviously, you're not going to get along well with me, but, you know, Absolutely. In, in, that, in, that, in that realm, in that vibrational plane, if you will, right, that's, that, that's going to be, like, the attributes I would name off to look for if you're that guy or not. You shouldn't listen to me. You should go look for other dark people. I'm not even making a joke. I mean, it's serious. You know, yeah, yeah. You watch any movies, you see just, you know, well, I'm sacrificing my baby to this demon, and then I'll give him all time. You know what I mean? Like, that's the move he wanted to make. I'm going to go make that move then. You know what I mean? Fuck it. That's your people's. Yeah. It's what about it. pure energy. Right, right, right. So here, here's where I'm getting at, right? So uh, meditation, right? Because what you're doing in meditation, it's like we don't meditate just to, like, get good at meditating, oh, all this stuff. Like, no, what you're really doing is you're training your focus, right? You're taking your gaze that you're using in your in your life to, you know, just move around, looking around. You're closing your eyes. You're shutting yourself off from, like, five sensory perception data. And then you're turning your gaze inward, right? Close your eyes. Put on some meditation music. You're not hearing anything. You're in a chair. You're not moving. You're not feeling anything. You're in a quiet space, right? Your attention starts going inward, and then the games begin. Then your brain will start being populated by either dark thoughts or good thoughts, pure thoughts or impure thoughts, right? And then you get to decide what's pure or impure to you based on how it makes you feel. If something's not making you feel good, obviously it's not jiving with you. Yeah. Data collection. So learn meditation, which is tandem with self-awareness. Absolutely. Right? I would say that is a vehicle to higher self-awareness. You're kind of doing the same thing with reading a book. You're getting really enthusiastic when reading these, like, you know, some game players or business books or, or even a spiritual book. You're like, that book is, if you're resonating with something, you can't resonate with the energy that isn't also existing in you. Absolutely. Right? So, I mean, so one time I meditate, I'm like, wow, I'm a pretty dark person. You know, and then I can explore that. Right? And I came to find that I'm, like, dark for the sake of understanding dark from a very controlled chaos perspective, like clarity, right? Absolutely. You know, I'm like, am I an evil person? Because I'd be thinking some dark, dark thoughts. And I go further. I'm like, well, where is it coming from? The wanting to protect and protect the kingdom. Right? I'm like, if you're coming into my shit, I'm fucking you up. I'm fucking you up. <laughs> I feel that. You're, you're fucked. You're I fucked. feel that. The demons will come out. Yeah. They're on a leash, but I'll take the leash off on you. No problem. Absolutely. Right? They're barking. They're ready to fuck you up. You know what I mean? That, 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 then I didn't know that before. I, uh, it took some time, self-awareness and seeking. 100%. Right, to understand this. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Meditate. Yeah. And now that kind of brings the next question. Um, I think that I meditate, right, in my own form. But I would probably like to get better at it because I hear about it reoccurring with people that I respect, Right. My form of meditation, I play Madden, I turn the volume all the way down, I put on an audible book while I'm playing Madden, I'm processing the book, right? And for whatever reason, that's how I process information the, the best way possible. And I come up with a lot of good ideas that way and things of that nature. But I know there's probably a more optimal way I could meditate for someone like me that hasn't meditated before, I have my own form of meditation where I get in touch with myself, but what advice would you give? 
I would say what you're doing is awesome. I think that's really cool. I think it's a way to hyper fast download information, get clarity. You know, you're kind of you're you're in a way you you it's for you're for sure meditating. You're taking your prefrontal cortex, you're putting it at ma- on Madden, and then you're listening to the audio books. You're it's going straight into your subconscious. Copy. However, it's a different f- space of meditation when you're just sitting there with yourself. Because then that's you. There's no Madden there or an audio book. What's in you right now? Right. So what happens is when you turn that gaze inward in that state, you'll notice, well, at first the brain will like want to think and eventually you just focus on your breath. You put your attention on your body. I always tell people when you're starting, like, feel your left foot, feel your right hand, feel the back of your head, feel your left nipple. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's there. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like right now, if I tell you like, hey, you know, you know where your left foot's at? You're going to be like, yeah. Over here. Yeah. yeah you, could, you could feel it. You, you put your attention there. Focus goes, energy flows. Right, so you're putting your focus on the internal state, and it gets populated in the mind. It gets animated in the mind. So the personification or imagery of what's going on inside your body comes in the form of what your thoughts are. So you start seeing this stuff. Or one time, I saw this thought of like me, like cutting my dude, Jesus so so bad. Like, like <laughs> I love my cat. And I was like, slid and stuff. I remember <laughs> pissed on some shit. I was like, God damn. Like, I'm like, okay, I need to be like more understanding. <laughs> it happens you know, though. Right, my like, dog bit me one time, and I wanted to shoot it. You know what I mean? Like, in, yeah, I, and that's I not that cool. Dog. But I need to. Yeah. I need to do that work, and that's why I meditate every day. Even still, it's like just to make sure I'm. You know, I'm just doing my job. It's being a good king. You're making sure that you're not. You know, you're still a person. You have emotions. We must all. It's like rents do every day. You know, what absolutely I mean? rents do every day. So, you know, I, I definitely would encourage you to meditate just from a just tranquil, just not no no stimulus type of place, and just see what's in you right now. And then how you orient to that will be how you orient to that. And if you don't like how you're orienting to it, you can ask yourself, okay, like, why? Why don't I like it? You know, you get three, three four levels deep, you get a lot of clarity. 100%. Now, I know a lot of people talk about, you know, taking your shoes off, touching the ground, um, laying down, sitting in a certain way. Like, how do you sit there and meditate? I, you know, I'm not saying you got to go crisscross applesauce. Yeah. Nah. You know what I mean? If you want to, you can. I just sit in a chair, find a comfy position. So before I start the process, I'll get comfortable, you know, find a comfy spot. I got these, uh, you know, AirPods, play some meditation music, not the noise canceling ones. I like yeah. that. If I'm in a little busier place, I got those like construction uh, earmuffs. Copy. They're like 13 bucks on Amazon or whatever. You know, you, you want a jackhammer, you know, it's what you wear. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Just put that over the AirPods. You're not, someone could be yelling next to you. You won't hear it, right? So this is just a little, you know, pro tip. Right? If you're in a busy place, you want to get in, you know, a little 10, 15-minute meditation, easy way to do it. And then, yeah, just sit in the chair, just chill. You don't need to do no ohm, no none of that. Just sit there, you know, just focus. Focus on your breath. Move your energy around your body, you know. Do, do, do all your fingers, all that, what, my pinky finger, you know, ring finger, index finger, all the stuff, you know, middle finger, you know, they do the other fingers. You know, I mean, the more you do that, like, I mean, I could feel my own organs. Really? Facts. Wow. But, I mean, I also meditating for, like, four or five years. Yeah, yeah. Regularly. That's pretty awesome. Right. And you so, can, can you, like, move them, or do you just, um, you know, the state of them, or? Like, I could slow my heart rate down, yeah. That's trippy. That's complete mind control. Of your body. Yep. That's pretty awesome. And now, let me ask you this. Did you did you grow up religious? My family was uh, grew up uh, Sikhi. Sikh. Okay. Um, people know uh, Hinduism, Hinduism, Islam, and Sikhism are the most prevalent religions in, in India, so they were, they were Sikhi. Um, I was always, like, at church because, you know, family's there, you know. 100%. Seemed like the thing to do. But I wouldn't call myself particularly religious. I did believe in God for sure, always believed. I always knew there was God, but I wasn't particularly religious, no. I think I'm, a, yeah, a comparable. Grew up Catholic, always believed in God. Some practices within Catholicism didn't connect me to what I considered God, a certain energy within myself, you know what I mean? Um, was meditation part of growing up for you? No, no, but I did always see my grandfather do bot, which is basically prayer for like two hours. I always respected it. Yeah. I was like, like to watch him do it day in, day out, like four in the morning and at uh, six to seven o'clock at night. He would just always do it. I always respected it. You know, I, I for me too, I agree with you. It wasn't like the, the modality of the religion just didn't resonate with me. I'm like, it doesn't seem right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would go to the, the church, you know, uh, our our temple and I look at the uh, 
the priests, if you will. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't feel right looking at it. I'm like, mm, I'm like, something wrong. Something, yeah. I was like, do you really believe what you're saying right now? You know what I mean? Like, I, as, as a little kid, you know, you can just tell when someone believes what they're saying. 100%. And this, that kind of turned me off in the whole thing. But then, you know, I believe at the highest level of every religion is a very deep spiritual knowing. And then I saw my grandfather always embody that. So I was like, there must be something here. Just maybe not that guy. But I didn't <clears throat> feel any need to go down my religious path, my home religion. I think there's there's something to say about growing up in a church, though, because there was certain practices within that church that I did resonate with, right? Like, for me, I can't go to a Christian church because, it's it, like, Catholic, I compare it to going to court. You know what I mean? Everybody's super quiet. There's a certain way. There's a certain cadence with everything. And in that in that format... I'm able to, I think, get in touch with myself and the Lord and everything of that nature. Now, Christians, not all Christians, but, you know, some Christian churches are more, um, you know, like uh, outward, very loud uh, music is involved. And I think one thing that I learned through watching all religions is whatever you got to do to get to that kind of space where you're in connection, I'm all about it. Oh, I love that. That's, I, I mean... Your grandpa worked for him, right? Right. It, it did. It did. It did. You know, and there's many paths up the mountain, right? It goes back to that. Yeah, many paths up the mountain. Which one's you know uh, going to match you the best? Hundred percent. We are all different, you know. Because uh, I brought I brought my friend the Catholic Church, and I think he fell asleep like four times. Right. 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 You know, he wasn't connected. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 And I'm like a big fan of like you know gospel and the, you know, the stinging and stuff. Like this 100%. is I think that's cool. You know, I mean, some people may not it might not be their cup of tea. It's fine. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. No Absolutely. Well, we're gonna take a little break. Um, after we come back from the break, we're going to touch on a few more uh, topics. I love what we're doing so far. Uh, we will be back soon. All right. And we're back. All right, guys. So this is part two. We're going to jump right into it like we did the first time. So let's start it off. I'm curious. This is the question that I was curious about. Your morning routine, if you have one. How does it go? So, my morning routine is wake up and just handle at this point. Um, I really don't want to sound cocky when I say that, but it's just always on. I hear you. It just is at a certain point. But when I was coming up, big fan of the 5 a.m. club. That's a great book to read, the 5 a.m. club by Robin club. Sharma. That guy's cool. 5 a.m., man, it's magic hour. You want to wake up early because... Everyone is awake after 7, 8. At 5 o'clock, if you can make it at 4, that 4 to about 6.30, there's some shit available. I like there's that. some shit available for you. It's so peaceful. Even if you live alone, there's a collective consciousness grid. There's Everything's energy. Everything's vibrating. If you want to think about it like a, like a matrix. All the people in the matrix are interacting with the mainframe called the matrix. Right, so imagine you're playing a game. It's like Ready Player One type shit. If you're training, if you remember the movie Matrix or the movie Ready Player One when they'd go, like, exercise and use their weapons, it's like a blank white room. Mm -hmm. It's like the training time with no distractions before they actually jack into the Matrix and, like, go do shit. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, so there's there's just no distraction energetically because, you know, you be, like, here's an example. You be in an elevator, four, four or five people in there. You know who's in a good mood, who's not. Absolutely. No one has to say anything. That same dynamic is scaled up in the world. And that's how I want you to think about it in the morning. Like, you're going into the elevator empty, just your own thoughts. You'd be surprised how many thoughts just ain't your own. If you're waking up at like 6, 7 o'clock, the world's already moving. Thoughts are in the air. You know, your neighbor might be doing this. Your parents, or if, if you live alone, or, or, what, or whoever you're living with, roommates, yeah. might be doing some other stuff. I live with 17 people, actually. Really? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you better you get going before they wake up, yeah, then. Yeah. You make your sleep schedule. <laughs> <laughs> someone's <laughs> coming in, someone's going out, no, I'm just playing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but seriously, for, you know, your thoughts are things. Literally, they're, like, they're, they're not physical, but they might as well be. And you can grab on them to, onto them with your consciousness. And in the mental plane, you want to make sure your thoughts are your own, not somebody else's. Because otherwise, you might be just dealing with shit that ain't even yours. You might have some thoughts. And that's the tricky part. 
why meditation is so crucial. You don't know because your brain is now going to use your own life experience to generate scenarios and imagery and situations that are correlated with that thought that might have came from the person next to you, not even you. What if they're in doubt? Now you're thinking about something. You got doubt, energy, denaturing, whatever you're trying to focus on. Now when you wake up early and just align yourself to yourself and just work on your vision, align with God, whatever, work out. You're already like jacked in, if you will, to your highest timeline, your highest path, your highest self. So then from that point, you can move into the chaos of the world, and it is chaos, with a structured position. Absolutely. A very fortified position. Absolutely. And that's what those early hours give you, truly. That's the bread and butter. 